Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, and for those of you who are new here, which um, that's a large number of you, I got overwhelming feedback from my last video, so thank you guys so much for liking and subscribing, um, it really means a lot to me. Um, today I kind of wanted to talk about 10 things that I wish I knew before I was a mom. I feel like this is like things I knew that are for being a mom and pregnancy and birth and stuff like that, but also like just things I wish I knew in general. Your intuition is guiding you to the right places. So I feel like being a mom now, I actually, I trust my intuition more. I trust my gut more. I am more confident in myself. I'm more sure of myself. Like once you go through the process of growing life in your body and like laboring and having that experience and knowing like, okay, I did that. It, everything else just kind of feels like if I can do pregnancy, labor, birth, and be a parent, I can do anything. And so, yeah, uh, just, I just wish I knew that before I ever got pregnant. I wish I had trusted myself more. If you want to become the person that you want to become, you have to model it. And so, I think the hardest it's hit me is when through parenting, I feel like the best way to have a good kid is to model that behavior. You know, you can say that, oh, reading is important and math is important and all of these things are important and you want your kid to read all the time and to study. Really, the best way to do that is by modeling that behavior. So for me, I wanted to play all these sports because of the fact that my dad played all those sports. Kids want to be like their parents. So if you really want your kid to be this person that reads all the time and reading is a huge thing right now, like with all of the technology, kids don't read as much as they used to. And so we picked up reading again. I'm modeling that behavior for Beckett. And now I'm like, well, I really like being someone who reads sometimes. Reading is also media consumption, but it's, it's not blue light. And so instead of having all of my media consumption be blue light and... I don't know, just like rotting my brain, at least when you're reading, your brain's working. I think now that I know that and like kind of have implemented those principles in my parenting style, I also have extended that to like other aspects of my life. You know those people that you're like, oh, they're a morning person, I could never be a morning person, like really hate the fact that I can't, like I just hate mornings and it's just the way I am. Like maybe... You're way, like that because you have that belief that you're not a morning person. Maybe to be that morning person who does yoga and runs and like, you know, those things that are like, like that person's got their stuff together, right? Maybe all it is, is faking it till you make it. And so that's a big thing I wish I knew before. Like the person that you're becoming, just model it. Just model what you want to be and eventually you'll become it. Kind of going on that, the third thing is changing five minutes of your day and forcing that change will cascade you into becoming the person that you want to be. So my diet has been so bad for years. I know that with PCOS, a big thing is diet. So you can actually either aid the symptoms of PCOS or even put PCOS into remission with your diet. And I knew that. However, I was still eating the way I was. I was still having coffee, which is terrible for PCOS, all these other things. And I started making five, like a five minute routine. So instead of going straight to the coffee maker and literally that would, that would be the only thing that got me out of bed was coffee. I was like, I would literally open my eyes and be like, you don't want to get out of bed, but there's coffee waiting at the coffee maker. Go get your coffee. Changing that, being like, okay. I'm getting up out of bed and I'm going to have some water. Surprisingly, a cold glass of water has very similar things to coffee. Coffee doesn't even, because I'm so addicted to it, coffee doesn't even wake me up. I actually feel a state of calm, very much like someone with an addiction. I do not feel energized from coffee anymore. I just feel normal. It's an addiction, full blown. So, and I only have a cup a day. But still, something that you do every day is an addiction or a habit or a ritual, whatever you want to call it. Like, And it was really not good for me. 
So like just changing five minutes can cascade into something else. And so I changed that one thing and all these other things followed and now my diet is, it's not perfect, but it's like a thousand times better than it was. Kids just really make you want to be a better person in general. And yeah, changing five minutes of my routine for like a month cascaded into me changing like a, an hour or two of, of my day now. My, my day is just very different than it was even three months ago. Fourth, set boundaries and be, be firm. When you don't, you're doing yourself a disservice. I'm very much someone who just says yes because I can't say no to people. And that resulted in me going to Kitchener literally every single weekend when I was living in Oshawa and me becoming so burnt out that I physically couldn't mentally be there for myself, for my body, or for my baby. And I think what people forget is if you want baby to be happy, mama's needs need to be met. And so, yeah, like it was just overwhelming how many people think they're entitled to my time and to Beckett's time, especially when I was so far away. Like if you really wanted to see him, come visit. Don't make me literally drive six hours in a day with an infant. Like it was just so bad. Anyways, set boundaries, be firm, and you will feel so much better. There are people who will try to insert themselves into your life now that you have a baby and try to see you like a thousand times more than they ever wanted to see you before you were pregnant. These people, in my opinion, view you as a vessel for life and nothing more. Like I only have value now that I got pregnant and I had a baby and now that I'm a mom and now you want to be in my life. It's really not because you want to be in my life, it's because you want to see my baby. Limit these people the most. Number six, kind of piggybacking on number five, people will think that they have a right to have access to you and your baby just because they're related. And like I said before, if if what you need is alone time, one-on-one -on -one with your baby, that's when you feel most at home. And I feel most at home when I have nothing else planned except for my activities with Beckett. When I have, I have a routine with him, I have things I teach him every day. You know, I have a lot of things that I'm doing. I am a teacher and a mom and and a wife and all of these things. So I feel that the best when I have no other commitments to anybody. Like that's how I feel my best and when I feel like I'm most successful as a mom. I can tell when my baby's overwhelmed. I can tell that he's also most comfortable when that happens, when we're going out and seeing all these people and all these other things for too much, it's, it's way too much for him. He gets overwhelmed and I can see that. So again, yes, family wants to see the baby and obviously don't be like an ass. Like you obviously want your, their family to see their family. And it is important that your baby sees other people. But like I said, it does not have to be every day. Do not strain yourself when you are healing. Especially for me, I was healing from a surgery, labor, all these other things. And learning how to be a mom. That takes time. For me, if I had to do it again, I would say for three months, nobody visit me, please. People really praise moms that are doing it all. They might be saying things like, Oh my gosh, you've you've driven for like four hours today, you've seen X, Y, and Z, and you've been to these appointments with Beckett, and all the time you're feeding him every 90 minutes, because he was eating every 90 minutes, and all these other things, like, wow, like, you're really killing it. And to these people, I would really like to say, yeah, I'm doing too much, and I really shouldn't be. You should be focused on healing, and it takes a long time for your body to be healing from this. And a very long time. Some people, it takes a, a, like a longer time than others. For me, I feel like four to six months, I started feeling like fully myself. I felt really good after birth because obviously I got rid of like 30 pounds of, of baby weight, of water weight, of a lot of things that exit your body when, when you deliver. But... It took me a long time to feel like 100% myself again. And so it should be not praised. 
okay? So instead of saying these things, because when, when people say that, you're like, yeah, like, oh, I guess, like, I'm supposed to be doing that, or that's a good thing, and that means I'm doing it right, and I, I'm overextending myself, and that's what I'm, what a mom is supposed to be. It's not. Instead, when you see someone doing all those things, your reaction should be, you're doing way too much. Is there something I can take off your plate? Um, or, like, are there any plans that you can cancel today so you can have time to yourself? That's the reaction should be, not, oh my god, that's amazing that you're doing way too much. We should really change that narrative. And again, when people are praising you and saying like that, you don't have to be rude, but you can say to them, yeah, I wish I wasn't doing so much. Change the environment and just remind yourself, like, that's not the goal. The goal is not to be doing too much. Next point, please accept the help. If you're going to have someone over, don't host them. Don't do all that. Give them stuff to do. And the other thing is people want to come and see the baby. I understand that. But sometimes I don't want to have, have two hours of cleaning and cooking and all these things on my plate. Come over and let me have some one-on-one -on -one time. That would be like a beautiful thing you could do for someone postpartum. Do the cooking and cook a meal in the kitchen or bring food over or clean the house for them. I had I had uh, one of my friends come over and do that and I can't even tell you how. I, I got emotional because she, she just took everything and did it. She saw that there was laundry to be done. She just did it. She didn't know, not me asking. She just did it. She saw that there were the counters needed to be wiped. She did that. She unloaded the dishwasher, X, Y, like all of that stuff. And that meant so much to me because in that time, I just sat with, with him. Like that's such a beautiful thing that you can gift someone postpartum. I knew this before having a baby. So they recommend six weeks before you have sex um, after surgery. For me, I had like all of these hormones and you get all this oxytocin and I felt like our family was coming together and I had so much love for Alex in those moments and I'm watching him take care of me. Like he helped me at the hospital and changing like my my sheets, my pads, whatever it, it needed, I needed, right? I had so much love for him and I just wanted to be intimate. I understand that some women don't want this. Disclaimer, I understand that. But you can kind of have sex when you feel ready. Medically speaking, the highest risk of infection is two weeks after uh, birth. That's why they don't recommend it for four to six weeks. But there are women who say that they've had sex earlier than that, and they're fine. I obviously am not a doctor. I can't recommend what, blah, blah, blah. But I talk to my midwife, and I'm like, can I do, like, other things? We all know what I'm talking about. And she's like, yeah, you can do other things, just non-penetrative intercourse. And so that's what I did until I stopped bleeding. So that's the other thing. Once you've stopped bleeding that means that you can have intercourse again. That's generally what they will tell you if you talk to your OB, um, or that, at least that's what mine said. Again, I'm not a doctor, just talk to them and figure it out on your own. However, I felt ready at like three and a half weeks, four weeks. And so that's when I did. And obviously I'm fine. And it made me feel normal. Like, I just wanted to feel normal again. And so, and, and like I said, I had all this love for Alex and I couldn't like express it in that way. And for me, that was important that I had that. Some people are like, I did not want to have anything like that for six months. Absolutely. What I'm saying is trust, trust your intuition and your body, do what feels right. And for me, what felt right was not waiting the six weeks. 10. Okay, again, if, you, if you're if you one of those people who, do, who don't want to do that and like there's nothing wrong with that, there's a lot of women who are being touched too much. You're breastfeeding. You have constant contact. You don't want any other contact. That's completely normal. I will say that like when you are intimate, there are a lot of love hormones that are released. All these things that help uh, your body go back to normal. And in general, obviously, when you do those kinds of activities, you feel good. You feel better. You have oxytocin, serotonin, all of these things. So again, for me, my advice to myself would be do it as often as possible. It will help you feel more normal. 
It'll boost your mood. If you don't want to do certain things, then don't. Maybe it's literally just you by yourself and you don't want your partner present. Whatever you need to do to make yourself feel good and release those hormones and help your postpartum healing, do it. Just do it. So anyways, those are the 10 things I wish I knew before becoming a mom. I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you're new and uh, this is the first video you're watching, please like, subscribe, turn on the notifications. I try to do videos every Wednesday. I'm not amazing at that. I'm on, like I said, I'm a mom. Beckett's always my priority, but whenever I do have time, this is what I love to do in my free time. Um, so if you have any feedback, comments, all these other things, please leave them in the comments below. I love hearing criticism, feedback, I, anything to make what I'm doing better for you guys. Okay, thank you, bye.